Happy Thursday, everybody. Uh, for this week's live class schedule, we have one more to go. Uh, tomorrow, 11.45 a.m. Make sure to join us. Uh, we recently switched our schedules to 11.45 all week. That was the busiest time of day. Um, so we just went with it for, for this week. Um, mostly because also next week we might even be preparing to uh, open up again. So uh, we hope to see you guys in real life really soon. And at that point, um, it will be a nice live class schedule as always. Um, there will be some changes and shifts. So uh, we, you know, keep your eyes peeled on our blog for, for anything we release or may have already released. Um, as far as the uh, workout goes, I'm going to pass it to Yash. We'll get into it. All right, the EMOP 10 is back. First minute, 15 thrusters, as usual. This time we're doing some box jump overs. Last time we had burpees, this time we're going to go for some box jump overs. This one's going to be tight on time, so you're going to be moving the entire time. Especially in that second minute, you got to be hitting those box jumps pretty fast. Thrusters, I would say, take you at most 30 seconds to get all 15 done. Ideally, let's do them unbroken. Um, the 20 box jumps, however, you got to get moving to finish them within that minute there. Now, it's only 10 minutes, not that long. The numbers might be a little high for how you think of them. It's, since it's not that long of a workout, try to see how long you can last with those numbers throughout the 10 minutes. Maybe the first round's like, ah, it's okay. Second round starts to pick up on you, and that fourth round you're just dying. Let's see how far you can get until you can finish the whole workout with the prescribed numbers. If you're only finishing 10 reps, let's say, in like 45 seconds, let's just stick to 10 reps then because that's still keeping your intensity high. So if you're not getting, um, if you're not hitting the 10 reps then, always feel free to bring it back down again as long as you're keeping that high intensity. So this should be a long burner style of workout, trying to get the amount of work done within each minute. Okay, so it's a great workout, great to work on that intensity there. Um, it's a good one, I'm gonna pass it over to Chris to finish off the afterburner. Uh, just another note about those uh, box jump overs, guys. I always feel obligated to say, whenever you're being intense or moving quickly on a box, keep your eyes on the box. Uh, we don't want you guys taking any spills at home, so just be responsible. Uh, for myself, I'm gonna go with a lower box and I'm gonna try to jump right over it. So normally I'll jump on a 24, but uh, I might go a little lower and just see what I can jump right over, just to increase my intensity. So if you have a lower box at home and you wanna try to actually aim for 20, you might go a little lower, it's still the same same outcome. So just, just a little tip there, eyes on the box. Uh, for the afterburner today, guys, we have a uh, hamstring stretch, uh, which we'll probably need after doing all those thrusters and box jumps. So two minutes per side. Stay tuned for what hamstring stretch we're going over today. Okay, for today's warm up, we are starting off with two minutes of some type of cardio. So you can run, you can bike, you can skip, uh, you can swim if you got a pool. Um, so pick something to get your heart rate up for two minutes. You can also do burpees. I bet you nobody is going to choose that, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, after that, we're doing two sets of 15 high pulls. So for that high pull, we're just going from a strict position today. We're gonna just keep those, you can use a kettlebell, you can use a, a backpack's a good one for this one. Just put your hands through the top of the straps and you're just gonna pull your object up as high as you can. Notice how I'm leading with my elbows and I'm trying to engage that upper back when I get to the top and I'm trying to squeeze those muscles as my object gets all the way up past my collarbone. After 15 of those strict ones, we're gonna go for uh, 10 Superman T raises. So for the Superman T raise, we're just gonna come down to our stomachs, and your hands are gonna be out to the side, and we're just gonna start off in a relaxed position. So your head and neck are neutral, looking down. Then from here, we're gonna raise our legs off the ground, try to keep the feet together, and you're also gonna raise your arms nice and high up off the ground. So you're trying to squeeze those shoulder blades together. You're also gonna feel your butt squeeze and your low back tensioning up as well. So 10 of those, don't rush those. I always like to pause for like a second or two seconds when I get to the top and make sure I feel that engagement in the areas I talked about. After you're done two sets of those, you're gonna do two sets of 15 Russian kettlebell swings. Biggest pointer to think about on those Russian swings, make sure that that hip comes back and that shin stays straight in the air. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna look forward and I'm gonna use my hip to pop 
that object up every single time. We're going about eye level here with our weight and at the top, I'm also thinking about pulling those shoulder blades together. Lots of activation in the upper back, rib cage in. After you're done 15 Russian kettlebell swings, you're gonna do 10 single arm presses. So for that single arm press, again, from that side view, we're pulling that rib cage down, squeezing the shoulder blades together before we even press our object. Once you get overhead, your head can go slightly through that window. I'm squeezing that shoulder blade again at the top for 10 nice and controlled on one side, and then 10 nice and controlled on the other side for two sets. Enjoy the warm up today, guys. We will see you for the workout next. All right, so for the workout, guys, again, EMOM 10, starting off with 15 thrusters. For those thrusters, guys, um, if you have two objects, let's try and use two objects if you don't have a barbell necessarily, so that we can work on 15 reps within that minute. Um, I don't want you guys to go 15 on one side, 15 on the other. You won't have enough time to finish 30 reps within there, um, unless you're super fast. But let's try and use two objects here. Um, so if you don't, another option is to go with the thrusters by just grabbing them from the ends of the dumbbells. So we can also do it uh, like this as well today as another option. So I'm going to demo like this, guys, for the thrusters. Uh, first thing, let's get that front rack position, elbows nice and tall. We want to always stay in a nice, front, good front rack position as we're doing the front squat part of it. So elbows are up, that helps keep my chest nice and tall, keeps our core nice and tight. Also, I'm thinking about pushing those knees out, keeping good balance in my feet. As I'm coming up from that thruster, we can drop those elbows a little bit to get ready for that press overhead. So I don't want you guys to keep those elbows too high where you're almost pressing it into your chin. You wanna drop those elbows down a little bit so we can get that direction of motion directly over top of our head. As that weight comes down, and I like to think about like, just as about, as it is about to touch my shoulders, I'm thinking about initiating that squat and getting ready for that next rep. So coming down, getting ready, popping straight up. Again, don't forget to breathe with these thrusters as you come up, exhale, and then as you're bringing the weight down and getting ready for that squat, make sure you take that deep breath in to tighten up the core, stay braced as you come up, and then exhale on the way up when you finish that rep. That's gonna help you guys a lot since this workout's gonna be, you're gonna be huffing and puffing a lot, so it's good to think about that breathing in your thrusters as well. Box jump overs, I'm going to use a bench and I'm going to clear the bench and then jump over top of it. Um, again, as mentioned, find something you're comfortable with jumping over. Even if you're clearing it and it's not something you're going to be jumping onto, um, make sure it's a safe height for you. So if this, is, this is going to be a uh, high intensity workout and sometimes you kind of go brainless in the middle of the workout. So you don't want to be thinking about a bunch of things. So again, before you start, test out that height you're going to use at least 20 30 reps see how it feels before you go for it so again for those box jump overs again i'm going to make sure I'm clearing that uh, side my eyes are in the direction of where i'm going to be landing so i'm not looking over there i'm looking at the direction where i'm landing and then as i'm getting ready i'm going to think about quickly twisting around getting ready for that next rep also another thing as you're twisting so if you notice i'm twisting counterclockwise direction, then I'm going in the clockwise direction. So I'm switching it up each time I do it. Think about that as well, which, uh, which way you prefer to do it to keep your intensity high. So um, I wouldn't think about it too much. Just practice a couple reps, see what feels more natural and do that, um, since you're gonna be going fast for those 20 reps. And again, you don't wanna be thinking too much when you're jumping over an object there. So 10 minutes, guys. First minute, 15 thrusters. Second minute, 20 box jump overs. Hope you guys enjoy this one. We'll see you guys next for the after. Do it. Okay, I got my gambling pose here. Um, getting ready for this stretch we're about to do, guys. Um, going for a two minute hamstring stretch. First option we're gonna give you here is just uh, reaching for your hand or your foot with your hand. So as you reach forward, your leg is locked out. So at the knee, it's locked out. You are gonna round your back a little bit here. 
That's fine, but you're trying to feel that in that hamstring. So as you're holding it in the uh, two minute pull, uh, for the two minutes, try to dig a little bit deeper by either reaching over your foot a little more, or as you're actually doing, kind of wiggling side to side uh, to feel different areas of that hamstring. Breathe through it as you let go of, some of your uh, breath. Try to see if you can sink down a little bit deeper. Again, two minutes. You got time to play with it, so play with it. So this is your first stretch. Second stretch here is take a belt, take a skipping rope, take a band. It's available to you. Take it over and uh, wrap it around your arch of your foot. You can pull your heel up towards you, keeping that leg straight. You can then start getting into your inner hamstring by dropping to the inside. If you don't feel much of a stretch, play around with it by maybe bending your knee, or you can even externally rotate at the hip, maybe internally rotate. Okay, bottom line, you're playing with it for the two minutes um, while you're down there, guys. So see what feels tight for you, play with it. Then when you're done the two minutes, you're gonna switch to the other side. So we're going for four minutes of mobility flexibility today, specifically for the hamstring, whether it's the inner hamstring, or, or not as you find which uh, area feels a little bit tight. And okay, we'll see you tomorrow for the workout.